All right, so the next thing I want to find out is, is how a, uh, you know, a private company the size of Federal Equipment is able to line a $55 million defense contract. So I'm here with Doug Ridenauer. Doug? How are you, Rob? Good. Doug's the president of, uh, of Federal Equipment. So Doug, tell me a little bit about Federal Equipment and how, uh, you know, how a company your size is able to land such a large defense contract. Well, Federal Equipment is actually a group of many different companies, one being the military division. And uh, we started off as a small, small, you know, replacement parts manufacturer sure. for, the, for the Defense Department. And we kind of segued into uh, new construction contracts. And, you know, we were lucky enough to be competitive in a, uh, a, a, a building a proof of concept model into development, which uh, landed us the, the large uh, $55 million contract you just referred to. So tell me, um, tell me a little bit about uh, um, how, how, does that, how does that concept of uh, you know, using magnets to drive something you know, so um, important to the, you know, the Navy's operations, um, how does that go from concept through to you know the test that we saw out there today. Well, it was it was it's a long process that we do go through. Uh, the the first phase was for the customer coming in and wanting a uh, a, a non a, you know a ropeless elevator system. So you you could use many different aspects. Linear motors was one that we uh, chose with. We teamed with a uh, uh, motor manufacturer, linear motor manufacturer, Magna Motion, and we submitted our concept. We were one of six companies. Mm -hmm. They then down selected to two, and then. Of those two companies, we both built proof of concept models. Those models, we had to go through a two year process of testing. Mm -hmm. We built one quarter scale of those. We tested them for the customer and uh, we were successful and was awarded the prime contract to build the uh, 11 for the ship. Wow. So you, you take all those, those strict design requirements and put them into something that's never been done before. Um, and then you got to go through and physically test some of those, but you did that digitally first too. Exactly. We used a lot of simulation modeling to, to help us define the weight parameters and the strength parameters uh, because weight is such an issue uh, on board the Navy ships mm -hmm. with penalty clauses on you know being overweight and so forth. The modeling ha helped us tremendously. You know, you've got four divisions now within your organization. Do you do you see that trend continuing? Are you looking to grow? We we are. We've uh, we've got a couple new product lines that we are envisioning over the next couple of years of uh, emerging and. Uh, with our existing lines, as you've probably seen, the heliport division, which uh, util utilizes some of Autodesk's uh, other uh, uh, software requirements, along with the drill heads. So with, with, with four different divisions uh, within uh, Federal Equipment uh, today, how do you manage, juggle such a diverse product offering that you have today? Well, it's, it, it, there are almost four distinct companies, the way we treat them, and we have managers in each one of those divisions that uh, you know take care of the customers needs the overall aspect of how the companies run through engineering through production and management is, is is basically the same but it's you know I and a few other people have to wear many different hats as it pertain to the different product lines but the 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 managers that we have in each division are pretty much rigid with that group so what, what's uh, what's next for federal equipment? I mean, you know, we, I hear all the time. You know, hear the street talking about, oh, they're you know, manufacturing's dead in the United States, but you guys are just banging it out right now. We are, and, it, and it's and actually it's it's starting to pick up even more. Uh, we with our uh, U.S. drillhead division, uh, that's a market that's been dead for quite a few years, but we see a lot of growth just recently. A lot of work picking back up, and we're pretty swamped in that uh, market right now. So. We're getting that in, in all, all of the divisions, but uh, the biggest growth we've seen just recently is just in the U.S. Drillhead Division. Hmm. So what do you attribute your, your success in, in such a, well, many would say for the last couple of years, a difficult economy? Well, what helped us quite a bit is our long-term contracts that we've had with the Navy. You know, it allowed us to have some, you know, backlog and stabilization through those years where it was a bit more lean. But uh, we were, we felt that we were very competitive. You know, the uh, products that we offer are competitive, and that's it's kept us at a pretty steady level even yeah. through the, the the down years that uh, most other companies have seen so doug continued luck to you you know we're, we're, we're honored to be your technology partnering and uh you know as you grow your business let us know what, what we can do for you i appreciate it thanks Rob. all right all right bob so what'd you think this is your first on the job rob it was a great time just thanks for inviting me it was great to see what federal equipment company's doing in terms of simulation not only to do validation 
optimization, and of course throwing in some simulation of blast tests. That's cool. I know, and it's a tremendous example of how to utilize technology so that you can improve product quality and really lower your overall cost of manufacturing. Yep, great trip. So before you melt away. And you. Let's go grab a beer. <laughs>